Ayan. Okay, so before tayo mag-start, punta muna tayo ng canvas, no? So, uploaded na yung quizzes nyo for chapters chapters 4 and 5, no? So, pwede nyo na siya i-take. Uh, yung chapter 4, multiple choice as usual. Then yung chapter 5, that is about yung i-discuss natin today. However, Dito sa chapter 5 quiz, may file upload kayong gagawin. Okay? So, bali, pagka select, uh, pagkatapos nyo ng quiz 5 dito, hindi pa ma-check yung file upload nyo. Ngayon, hello, Rika. Okay. So, dito sa quiz 5, may i-upload kayong file. Yun yung sagot nyo sa isang item sa quiz. Ang problem is hindi agad lalabas yung score doon. No? Kasi I have to manually check your answers dito sa chapter 5 quiz. Okay? So yung score dito, sa una, um, around 10 yung maximum na pwede nyo makuha. Pero once na ma-check ko na yung files nyo, ayun, doon ko na may bibigay yung full credit. Okay? Yung quiz nyo pala na sa three, uh, quiz 3, yung sa ano, peptide bonds, okay na siya. So, perfect naman kayong dalawa doon. No? Okay. So, again, quiz 4, open na to. Multiple choice about uh, the 3D structure of proteins. Quiz 5, may multiple choice and may file upload na question. Okay. So, mamaya pag-usapan natin, ano yung i-upload yung file. Okay. So, that has something to do with our lesson today. Okay. Then by next week, magbi midterm na tayo. So multiple choice, just the use, just like the usual, uh, and then, yan, 50 items lang. Okay. So let's start with enzymes. Okay. So ano ano alam natin about enzymes, no? Ah, sige. Okay. Ano alam niyo about enzymes noong ano kayo high school? Madali. Pwede mag-share. Uh, let's have ni Cart. Sir? Uh, an ano alam natin about enzymes noong high school tayo? Polymer siya, sir. Polymer? Tapos, um... Ano yun? Catalyst, yun. Ayan, polymer siya and catalyst. So, okay, so how about Rika? Ano yung naririnig mo sa enzymes? O kaya, may usual example sa atin ng biology nun, di ba? Okay, so ano kaya yun? Hello, Rika. <laughs> So, ano, ano yung alam natin about enzymes? Or kung may example ka, you can give kahit ano, isa lang. Okay, so mukhang naka ano, si Rika off, offline pa siya. Okay, so anyway... So, yun. So, kung ano yung sinabi ni Nicard, that is true about enzymes naman, no? So, totoo that enzymes are polymers, no? Eh, ayun. Eh, eh, sige, Rika. Ano yung example ng enzymes? Or kahit anong idea lang? Ayan, message na lang niya. Baka... Uh, Oo nga, eh. So, pwede mo na message na lang yung ano mo. Or you can use your mic. Mukhang mahina ata talaga connection natin. So, anyway, uh, later na lang, Rika, ha? So, yun. So, to proceed, no? So, enzymes are indeed, they are polymers, no? Pero, anong type ng polymer, no? So, in our previous chapter, 
we knew that one of the natural polymers in our body is the proteins, di ba? So, in a sense, no, yung ating enzymes, they are protein molecules, no? Sila yung mga biological polymers, no? So, ibig sabihin, yung lessons natin last time that will play a role dito sa discussion natin, okay? So, yun yung idea natin. Enzymes, they are polymers uh, made of protein, okay? So, ibig sabihin, may mga amino acids din dyan. And at the same time, they catalyze the reactions, no? So, when you say catalyze the reaction, they speed up the reaction. Meron tayong inorganic catalyst, no? Yun yung mga metals, for example, sa sasakyan. No? Sa ilalim ng sasakyan, may tinatawag na catalytic converter that converts carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, eh, no? the less toxic form ng CO molecule. No? Okay. So, yun. So, for inorganic chemistry, may mga metal catalyst na kami. And for biological species, our body makes use of enzymes na. So, sila yung mga body catalyst na. So, in our chapter today, we will see kung ano yung function ng enzyme, what are the types of the enzymes, how to determine the speed of the enzyme, and then kung ano-ano yung mga pwedeng gawin ng enzyme, especially regulation. Okay. So, pag-usapan natin lahat ngayon about enzymes. Okay. So, yun. Sabi nga natin, enzymes are polymers or biological polymers that catalyzes chemical reaction and they are mostly proteins. Okay. And what we know about catalysts is that they speed up the rate of chemical reaction. Okay. However, during the process, they are not consumed. No? So, hindi sila na-convert no into the products. No? So, kumbaga, they just guide the reaction to occur. No? So, for example, you have the substrates. No? And here is the enzyme. So, itong mga substrates natin, they will be joined by the enzymes to produce the products. No? Tapos, may kita nyo that after the process, nare-replenish yung ating enzyme. No? Ibig sabihin, ang goal niya lang talaga is pagdikitin yung mga substrates o kaya putulin sila. No? So, yun lang yung goal nila. No? Just to serve as the ano, helpers of the chemical reaction. Okay? And enzymes are mostly globular proteins. So, ibig sabihin, malaking clump siya. Okay? Uh, kasi nga, mahab, malaki yung kanyang ano, tertiary structure, let's say. No? So, globular yan. Uh, hindi siya yung um, katulad ng mga keratin, no? yung mga naka-sheets. No? Okay? So, yan. Kasi hindi naman siya structural eh, no? So, ang purpose ng enzyme is for transport and stuff, no? Kaya globular siya. Okay? And saan ginagamit yung enzyme natin? So, there are lots of uses sa enzyme, no? So, one of the primary example would be the breakdown of nutrients, no? Especially during ano, cellular respiration. Ano yung first step doon? Glycolysis. No? So, in glycolysis, yung sugar molecule natin, that will be later on broken down to pyruvate with the help of several enzymes. No? So, gagawin nun, pagkapasok ni glucose sa cell, puputulin agad siya ni ano, uh, hexokinase. No? So, that is an enzyme that will cut the six-membered ring na sugar. Okay? So, once na putol na yon, puputulin na naman yun ng isa pang kinase, uh, isa pang ano, enzyme, etc., etc. No? So, yun. So, ganun yung idea ng enzymes. No? They serve as the helpers uh, in breaking down the nutrients of uh, the energy, no? uh, to get the energy no, from them. Okay? So, yun. So, malalaman natin yung mga enzyme involved doon sa process na yun when we go sa cellular respiration na, no? which is ano, sa finals pa naman. Okay. Uh, other than that, no, ang enzymes, 
ginagamit din natin yan sa paggawa ng ating mga vital ano, system sa katawan such as DNA no? during the replication process. Yung protein, may paggawa ng protein, may mga enzymes din involved to help that. Okay? And then, mga cell membrane and tissues. No? So, lahat ng mga yan, uh, yung production nila, that is helped by the enzyme. Okay? So, for example, sa DNA, zoom in tayo dito. Ito pala mga ibang example. Ito, sa sugar muna tayo, sa starch. Okay? Sa ating laway, may tinatawag tayong amylase. No? So, that is an enzyme that will cut these, ano, that will cut the starch in our food into shorter polysaccharides. No? And then, yung mga shorter polysaccharides na yan, they will be cut later on sa loob pa ng cell. No? So, yan. Ito yung isang example ng enzyme, yung laway natin mismo. Okay? Another purpose of the enzyme is to help us in our, ano, in maintaining uh, the structure and the function of the cell or even sa replication niya, nakakatulong din siya. Okay. So, ito, dito natin may kita yung process ng replication ng DNA. So, we know when DNA replicates, may split yan into two, no? So, may split yan into two with the help of the uh, helicase, no? DNA helicase. So, bali, puputulin niya yung DNA into two, yung, uh, yung ating stranded DNA, makakat yan into uh, chains na lang. And then, itong dalawang chain, so yun yung nababasahin ng mga ating ano, polymerase. No? Yun, yun yung gagawa ng new set of DNA molecules. No? Okay. So, yun. So, that means ang enzymes ay involved sa process na to. Malalaman pa natin to pag nandun na tayo sa topic na yun. Okay. Maraming enzyme kasi na involved dito sa uh, replication process. So, isa-isay natin yun. Okay. And also, yun nga sa energy production, sabi ko sa inyo, uh, et, maraming enzymes na kailangan dyan. So, actually, for, uh, for every steps, may enzymes na katumbas yan. No? Okay. So, yun. So, yun. So, basically, enzymes, they help us to get energy and even to allow our existence to happen. Na? So, yun. So, yun yung isang malaking tulong ng ating enzymes. Okay, so since enzymes are catalysts, that means they speed up the rate of reaction to at least a factor of 10 raised to 20, okay? So, ibig sabihin, pinapabilis niya yung reaction by that much. Kasi imagine nyo, yung sugar, iwan nyo lang yan sa lamesa, will it be, uh, will it, will it be converted instantly into energy? Hindi, di ba? Pero, with the help of enzyme, yung sugar natin instantly na convert into energy when we take that in our body. Okay? So, that means yung enzymes natin, they help to, ano, they help to speed up the rate of reaction nga. No? So, instead na hindi mangyari yung reaction, non-spontaneous siya, with the help of enzyme, the reaction will be much spontaneous na. No? Okay? So, yan. so, take note natin that the speed of reaction will be increased to a factor of 10 raised to 20. And, okay, so sa ating body, there are lots of enzymes. No? For every function, there is actually an enzyme corresponding to that. So, that means yung ating enzymes, they must be unique. No? So, here are some of the characteristics of enzymes. Enzymes are known to be highly selective. Ibig sabihin, alam nila kung sino yung pipiliin nila na molecules, pipiliin nila ng substrate. So, choosy sila. Only those molecules na fit sa kanya, yun yung gagalawin niya. Okay? Pero kapag ibang molecule yan, hindi niya papakilaman yan. Okay? And it is also stereospecific. Okay? So, in organic chem, alam natin that there are uh, stereo... Uh, stereocenters, di ba, sa ating molecule, especially organic molecule. And for each type of molecules na uh, may stereo, ano, stereochemistry, may iba't ibang chemical behavior yon. So, si enzyme, nadidistinguish niya ano yung, ano, ano yung stereo, uh, stereochemistry ng ating molecule na. 
So yun. So dito makikita natin that it shows that our enzyme here is highly selective. No? Because sa ang ating enzyme, there is a crevice. No? Ibig sabihin may ano, onting butas dyan sa gilid niya. Where in the substrate, uh, the substrate will come in. No? Yung substrate, ito yung, uh, ito yung molecules na ginagalaw niya. Okay? So depending on the shape of your substrate of your molecule of interest, may corresponding enzyme for that. No? Okay. And also, sabi nga natin, ang enzymes are stereospecific. No? So depending on the stereochemistry of the molecule, the enzyme may work or may not. No? So sa biochemistry, there are two primary ano, enzymes. I mean, there are two primary stereochemistry na inaalam natin dito, yung L and yung D. Okay? Pag sinabing L, ito yung left-handed molecule. Okay? Kapag sinabi nating D, ito yung right-handed molecule. So, kapag left-handed, uh, that's clockwise, right-handed, counterclockwise yung rotation ng stereocenter. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, so, some molecules may work on some enzymes, no? Depending on the stereochemistry. For example, ito, naka-L convert, uh, naka-L configuration siya. So, it will work because it this molecule is fit, no? Doon sa kanyang active site. Again, yung active site, yun yung papasukan ng substrate. Okay? So, this molecule will fit sa enzyme. That means, compatible siya. Gagana yung reaction. However, if the molecule is not fit, no? Doon sa active site, then hindi mangyayari yung reaction. Okay? So, yan yung dahilan bakit sandamukal na enzymes meron yung katawan natin, no? So, for each functions, for each chemical reaction steps, there are enzymes no, na kailangan para doon no, for those specific substrates. Okay? So, yan. so, again, what we know about enzymes is that they are highly selective. May sabihin, choosy sila. Hindi lahat ng molecules nirareactan nila. Only few. Okay? And they are stereospecific. No? So, ibig sabihin... Although same molecule yan, pero depending on its configuration, the enzyme may or may not react with it. No? Okay? So, yan yung characteristics ng ating enzyme. So, yan. Paano natin malalaman from the word if that is an enzyme? No? So, madali lang. Uh, generally, our enzymes has this suffix, ace. No? Okay. So, they have the suffix ace. For example, helicase, amylase. No? So, mapapansin nyo yung mga words na yun, may ace. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, they are, ano, they are enzymes. Okay? So, example, dehydrogenase, they remove hydrogens, protease, they hydrolyzes the proteins, and etc. Okay? Basta may word na ace no? sa molecule, yun ay enzyme. Okay? Okay, and enzymes can be classified by their EC number or enzyme classification number. Uh, we will not dive uh, further into this kasi ito ay para sa mga molecular biologists na, no? So, this is set by the International Union of Bio Biologists, no? So, kung may IUPAC sa chemistry, sa biology may IUB, no? So, they set the categories for different enzymes. So, yung easy number, that is a four combination number that will tell kung anong class yan, ano yung subclass niya, and ano yung specific function ng ating enzyme. Okay? So, for example, we have D6, uh, D-hexo-6-phosphotransferase. Ang original name yan ay hexokinase. No? So, based on the easy number, so, kung class 2 yan, that means that is a transferase. That means may ililipat siyang molecule. Then, yung 7, that means yung ililipat niyang molecule ay phosphoryl group. No? And then, yung 1, saan siya magre-react? No? So, yan. Yung OH, yung tatanggap daw ng phosphoryl group. No? Okay. So, yan. Uh, we will not dive into that further kasi pang biologist na yan. No? Mga molecular biologist. No? Kasi ang alam natin is that the classification of enzyme is given by EC numbers. It will tell us what is the class of the enzyme, ano yung ginagawa niya overall, tapos ano yung 
ano yung specific na ginagawa niya and saan niya ginagawa yun. Okay? So, doon natin yung makikita sa easy numbers. So, here are the six, ano, the six classes of enzymes, no? Uh, pero I think na-update na to, no? Nadagdagan na ata tong six na to. However, yung mga biochemistry book, six lang talaga yung nilalagay nila. Pag ginugal nyo yan, no? Pag winikipedia nyo, alam ko, greater than that. Okay? Pero anyway, so here are the six primary uh, categories or classes of enzymes, no? We have the oxidoreductases, the transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, and ligases. No? So, kailangan ba natin ito kabisaduhin? No? Kahit di naman, no? be familiar lang kung ano yung purpose nila. Okay. So, let's talk about oxidoreductases. Okay. Now, from the word itself, ano kaya ginagawa niyan? It, it allows the oxidation reduction reaction to occur. Okay. So, siya yung nag, ano, nag-aalaw ng redox reaction. Okay. So, sa ating mga molecules. So, some examples are oxidases, enzymes, reductases, enzymes, and dehydrogenases, enzymes. No? Pag sinabi naman natin transferases, these are the enzymes that transfer the group of molecule. No? Okay. Nasa word naman, no? Oxidoreductase, ano, redox reaction yun. Pag sinabing transferases naman, that pertains to transfer groups, no? Okay, sa so pag-transfer ng groups, no? So, yung enzyme yung naglilipat ng group na yun sa isang molecule. Pag sinabi naman nating hydrolases, that means may mga pinuputol, no? Okay, so hydrolases, may mga pinuputol na bonds, specifically yung CC, CO, CN, and PO bonds. No? So here are some of the uh, names of those enzymes, lipases, proteases, nucleases, carbohydrases, and phosphatases. Okay, and then we have lyases. No? So they also serve the similar function. No? May pinuputol silang bond. However, that is done through elimination reaction. Okay? Okay? So, dito, hydrolytic cleavage, ibig sabihin, magre-release ng water yung ano, pagka-cleave nila. However, pag sinabi natin lyases, elimination reaction yan. So, kung naalala nyo pa yung sa org chem natin, yung sa elimination reaction, meron lang, ano, Meron lang nuclophile na mag attack no? And that will cut the bonds, no? So, yan. So, ganun yung ginagawa nila dito. So, the enzyme may provide the nuclophile that will cut the, ano, that will cut the, these bonds. Okay, so here are some example, the hydrases, the carboxylases, the aminases, and hydratases, no? So, also, we have isomerases, okay, from the word itself, they allow the structural changes in molecules, no? So, yan, so, they create isomers, no? Okay, so, these are enzymes that shifts the uh, stereochemistry of the molecule. So, kunwari, L yan, gagawin yun, D, pwede yun, okay? Meron tayong racemases and mutases, okay? And lastly, we have ligases, so, compared to the other two, yung hydrolases pati lyases, when you say ligases, they join the molecules, okay? And together with, uh, together with it, may uh, ATP consumption yan. Sabi sabihin, yung pag pinag-join mo yung molecule na yan, magagamit yan ng energy, okay? So, yan. So, those are the six primary categories of enzyme. Oxidoreductases, they allow redox reaction. Transferases, they allow transfer of groups. Hydrolases, they allow clitic, uh, uh, hydrolytic cleavage. No? Uh, hydrolytic cleavage of the bonds. Pag sinabi namang lyases, uh, cleavage through elimination. Isomerases, they allow isomerisms. No? Yung pag change ng isomerism ng molecule. Then ligases, they join the molecules together. No? 
and that is accompanied by the use of energy, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay? So, yun. So, now, let's look at ano, anong itsura ng ating enzyme. So, sabi nga natin, our enzyme is globular. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, that makes use of possibly alpha and beta uh, conformations. No? So, pinaghahalo nila yung alpha and beta structures nila. Okay? Kaya naging globular siya. Okay? So, dito sa ating enzyme, there is a characteristic site, no? There is a characteristic position in which your substrate can go into. Yung substrate, yun yung reactant natin, no? So, mangyari yung ating reactants, papasok siya sa enzyme for it to be catalyzed. Ang tawag natin sa site na pinapasukan niya ay active site, no? So, when you say active site, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, that is a crevice-like location. Ibig sabihin, para siyang, ano, para siyang may uka, no? So, ito yung globular enzyme natin, itong kulay blue. Okay. So, itong kulay blue yung ating globular enzyme. Yung uka doon, that is the active site, no? Okay. Ayan. So, in the active site, dito nangyayari yung enzyme catalysis. Dito na nangyayari yung transfer of groups, yung pagkaputol ng bonds, or pag-join ng atoms, no? or pag-join ng molecules. Dito lahat yung nangyayari. Okay? So, other than the active site, ito yung bigger crevice, meron ding smaller crevice, which is the allosteric site. No? The allosteric site, ito yung other crevice nga, no? which is smaller than the active site. However, malaki yung effect ng allosteric site. No? Kasi kapag yung inhibitor natin, ito yung mga molecules that will stop the activity. Pag kumabit yung inhibitor natin, titigil tong catalysis na to. Okay. So, one example of the inhibitors ay yung, ano, yung antihistamine. Okay. So, antihistamine, yung mga molecules na yun, pwede pumasok yan dito to prevent the chemical reactions para tumigil tayo sa pagbahing-bahing, no? So, yun. So, saan pumapasok yung antihistamine natin? Sa allosteric site, no? So, again, yung active site, dun pumapasok yung substrate, no? So, dun papasok yung substrate to allow the chemical reaction to occur. And then, yung smaller crevice, yung maliit na uka, that is the allosteric site. The allosteric site can affect the active site, no? So, in the presence of inhibitor, pwede tumigil yung reaction. Okay. So, one primary example is yung kapag may allergy tayo, no? Okay. Which happened just recently to me. <laughs> okay. So, yan. So, allergy, inom ng alerta, ah, o kaya ng um, antihistamine. So, papasok sila doon. Titigil yung chemical reaction. Hindi na tayo babahangin, okay? So, yan. So, ngayon, so alam natin that our substrates, ito yung mga reactants, they go into the active site. No? Okay. So, yung method ng pa pagpasok ng substrate natin into active site, there are two primary uh, primary models for that. No? We have the lock and key model for the enzyme-substrate interaction, and meron din naman tayong induced fit model. No? for the enzyme substrate interaction. So, ang pinakatanggap sa science is itong induced fit model, okay? Instead of the lock and key model. Pero let's check kung ano yung difference nilang dalawa. Okay. So sa lock and key, imagine yung padlock, yung enzyme. This yung key mo, yun yung substrate. So kapag pinasok mo yung susi sa padlock, mabubuksan mo yung ano yung padlock di ba so parang ganun din dito daw sa enzyme that the key is specific to one lock no that means the substrate is specific only to one enzyme okay so ibig sabihin it assumes that the enzyme is rigid no yun lang talaga yung shape niya however that is not the reality, no? We know that molecules, they are flexible, no? Gumagalaw-galaw yan. Depending on the pH, pwede umikot yung mga hydrophobic, hydrophilic parts nila. So that means, yung ating enzyme, they are not really that rigid as said by the lock and key model. So that's why we use the induced fit model. 
So in, in the induced fit model, yung ating enzyme, hindi siya rigid, hindi rin siya static because it is flexible, but there is a preformat shape na, no? Parang may hulma na talaga siya. Okay. Now, we're in, kapag may enzyme, may substrate na kaparehas yung hulma doon, pwede siya pumasok. However, pag ano, pag lock and key model, specific na talaga yung shape niya, no? Yun lang talaga yung pwede pumasok doon. Okay? So, ano example di natin dito? So, again, pag sinabi ko lock and key, yung isang suse para sa isang padlock, no? Pag sinabi natin induced fit, ito yung mga yung mga ano weird na padlock sa bahay. Yung kahit ano yung kahit ano basta pumasok doon pwede mabuksan, 'di ba? May ganun na. Eh. For example, yung mga pintuan sa CR, hindi naman talaga siya suse, no? Actually kahit ano, kahit uh, tawag ng kahit kutsara pwede mo ipasok doon mabubuksan yung CR, 'di ba? So ganun din yung enzymes minsan, no? As long as they have the general, ano, the general shape. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman kailangan super specific. Basta may ganung hulma lang siya. Pwede siya makipag-react with the enzyme. Okay. So again, pag lock and key, rigid. Pag, ano, pag induced fit, flexible. And ito yung totoo talaga, no? Induced fit model, flexible. Okay. Because there are many factors that can affect the structure of the enzyme, no? the quaternary and the tertiary structure. Maraming pwedeng mag-play role doon, katulad ng sinabi natin last chapter. Okay? So, yun. And yun, ganun lang naman yung ano, idea natin about the enzyme. Okay? So, ano uli idea natin about the enzyme? We have the active site wherein the substrate or your reactant will go into. And there are two models describing that. We have the lock and key and the induced fit. No? So, sabi sa lock and key, one enzyme, one substrate. Sabi naman sa induced fit, basta same itsura, pwede na. Okay. So, ganun. So, parang ano siya, mas considerate siya. Basta ganun yung itsura ng molecule, yan, pwede niya, pwede yun yung reactant niya. And ito naman, this shows us the enzyme catalysis, kung ano ba talaga yung ginagawa ng ating enzymes. In terms of energy, okay, so familiar na kayo dito, uh, kasi nagaganito nag tayo ng org chem natin. So in terms of energy, uh, teka lang, wala ko sa iPad eh. Okay. So, in terms of energy, okay, we can describe the chemical reaction with free energy, delta G. Pwede rin naman delta H, okay? So, if the energy of the product is less than the reactants, then the reaction is exothermic, diba? So, this is exothermic or exergonic. And yung barrier in between that is called the activation energy. So the activation energy provides a barrier between reactant and product. No? So the higher the activation energy, the harder it is for the reaction to occur. Okay. So kunwari, sasakyan yan, mahihirapan yun umakyat no? pag masyadong mataas yan. So hindi mangyayari, hindi mabubuo yung products. So anong ginagawa ng ating enzymes? Okay. So, ang ginagawa ng ating enzyme is that they lower the activation energy. Okay. Binababaan niya yung humps. No? So, that our reactant would go to the products with minimal efforts na lang. No? So, onting effort na lang, mapupunta na siya sa products. Okay. So, yun yung role ng catalyst, especially ng enzymes no? sa ating body. Kasi, for example, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung asukal, intayin nyo maging energy yan. Will that happen? In one year, no. In two years, hindi. In five years, hindi rin. Baka mauna pa mabulok yung ano, asukal, no? Kung nabubulok man siya. Na hindi siya na convert into energy. But, in, with the help of the enzymes in our body, especially mga enzymes sa glycolysis natin, na nakukuha natin agad yung energy sa food, di ba? So, in just few minutes after eating energetic agad tayo. No? Pero kapag yung asukal, titignan mo lang siya, walang nangyayari. No? Kasi mataas yung activation energy to convert sugars into products. However, with the help of biological catalyst, 
bumibilis yung reaction because they lower the activation energy. Okay? Okay. So, yan. So, our enzyme come in many forms, no? So, yung enzymes natin, not always active yan, no? So, minsan, there are, ano, there are triggers that will allow our enzyme to function, no? Ang tawag natin sa enzyme that is inactive is zymogen, okay? So, yung zymogen, that is an enzyme that is inactive. Ibig sabihin, floating around lang siya sa body natin. It will not do anything, okay? Kumbaga sa ano sa mga heroes no naka lock naka lock mode pa siya. And yung ating zymogens they can only be activated um, when peptide bonds are uh, removed or added no. Okay? So one example would be insulins, okay? Proinsulins. Okay, so yung proinsulin that is a zymogen of insulin, okay? So mapapansin natin pag sinabing zymogen may pro sa unahan, okay? So, pro-insulin can be converted to insulin by removing 33 amino acid peptide chain. Okay. Okay. So, we have this enzyme. This is inactive. However, if you cut the bonds, no, that, that can be activated. Na. Okay. So, gagana na siya. Okay. So, ito rin yung isang mga ano. Ito rin yung isang mga reason bakit sabi natin last time yung ating diseases they can be cut uh, they can be attributed with the protein structure no kasi for example if your body needs insulin but hindi niya ma-cut yung amino acids required na putulin hindi gagana talaga yung enzyme di ba okay so ganun so yan so again tawag natin sa inactivated version ng enzyme ay cymogen Malalaman mo yan kapag may word na pro sa unahan. For example, pro-insulin, insulin. No? So, yan. They can be activated when peptide bonds are removed. No? Kapag pinutulan mo siya ng extra part. Okay. So, yan. So, another example would be trip, uh, pepsin. So, yung pepsin, ito yung nasa ating sigmura. No? Okay. So, we have pepsinogen here. Then, kapag low yung pH, ibig sabihin, acidic yung ating body, dun nagiging active yung pepsin. Na. So, it helps to break down um, molecules sa ating katawan. Okay. So, other forms of enzyme are called apoenzymes or apoproteins. Okay. So, medyo similar siya dito, no? Pag cymogen, inactive precursor of enzyme. Pag sinabing apoenzyme, ito yung enzyme na mismo, wala nang puputulin, pero inactive siya. Okay? So again, pag sinabing zymogen, precursor, ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya yung final form, may kailang kang putulin. Zymogen yun. Pero kapag sinabing natin apoenzyme or apoprotein, ito na yung enzyme na siya mismo, pero hindi siya gumagana. Okay? And our apoenzymes or apoproteins can be activated with the help of the cofactors, okay? So what happens is that the cofactors will be added into the active site of the enzyme. And once it is in the active site of the enzyme, yun, making holo enzyme na siya or isang buo na siya. One functional enzyme na siya, okay? So again, ano yung difference ng zymo sa apo? Pag sinabi zymo, hindi pa siya yung final form ng protein, ay ng enzyme. Kasi may puputuling ka pa doon. Okay, para yun na yung enzyme mo. However, pag apo, yun na yung enzyme mismo, hindi lang gumagana. So, in order for your enzyme to work, you have to add cofactors or coenzymes. So, yung cofactor or yung coenzyme, they will bind in the active site. And once they are bounded to the active site, they will act they will act as one big enzyme na. Okay? That is called the holo enzyme. So, ano yung mga cofactors natin? Yun yung mga metals. No? That's why our food must be enriched with, uh, uh, with nutrients, no? with minerals such as iron. Okay? So, kung nagtitiktok kayo, alam ko may napanood kayong video doon na may isang babae, sabi doon, yung cereal daw may bakal, so, bakit daw may bakal yun? Ba't pinapakain sa bata? Ang purpose ng bakal is para 
para mapagana yung mga enzymes sa katawan natin. No? So, yung iron, ayan, so ginagamit yan by some enzymes to work. No? Okay, so yan, that's why we need metals in our body. Okay, so here are some cofactors. These are some of the metals needed for specific enzymes. For example, we need potassium para magkaroon tayo ng working pyruvate kinase. Okay, so pyruvate kinase is necessary sa glycolysis. Yung magnesium na nakukuha natin from the plants, okay, so yung mga green leafy vegetable, may mga magnesium yon sa chlorophyll. So, kumain kayo ng gulay talaga. No? Yung magnesium na nakukuha natin dun sa green leafy vegetables natin that activates the hexokinase. No? And ito yung first enzyme na ginagamit sa glycolysis. Kaya totoo yung sinasabi nila, kapag hindi ka kumain ng gulay, para kang lantang gulay. Okay? So, kaya kumain ng kulay, uh, gulay para maging makulay ang buhay. Okay. Kasi yung magnesium... Makukuha mo lang yan mostly sa dahon. Yung chlorophyll, may magnesium yun sa gitna. Okay? So, kaya kain kayo ng gulay para maging energetic kayo. Because again, hexokinase, this is the first enzyme necessary for glycolysis to start. Okay? Manganese. So, ito ginagamit for ribonucleotide reductase. No? So, I'm not really familiar kung saan natin nakukuha yung manganese. Heavy metal to eh. Okay. Pero yeah, kain lang kayo ng healthy foods. No? Feeling ko meron naman yung plants ng manganese. Okay. Zinc, yan ay necessary sa alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenase, this is one of the enzymes necessary din sa glycolysis. Okay. And also yung zinc, ginagamit din to sa... Ano? Ginagamit din to sa DNA sequencing. Okay? So, naalala nyo yung helicase kanina. So, yung zinc, it serves as an activator din, no? Para mangyari yung replication ng ating DNA. Kaya nga, kapag may sakit kayo, ang primary na ibibigay sa inyo ng doctor, primary na sasabihin sa inyo is, kumain, uh, uminom kayo ng vitamins with zinc. Kaya nga mayroong mga brands na Conzase, Immune Pro, may zinc sila. Because, yun nga, other than kailangan sila sa glycolysis in the form of alcohol dehydrogenase, kailangan din sila sa replication ng cells. No? Okay. Para mapalitan yung mga dying cells sa body natin. Okay. So, selenium that is needed for glutathione peroxidase. Okay. Uh, so I'm not familiar with that enzyme. Copper. Ayan, cytochrome oxidase. So I think this is used in electron transport chain, mga cytochrome. And molybdenum, yan ay ginagamit sa denitrogenase. So I don't think sa tao to. No? Okay. So, pero ayan, so these are some of the cofactors and yung enzymes na gumagamit ng mga cofactors na yan. So again, aning pinaka-point natin dito that we need minerals, no? When I say minerals, mga bakal sa ating katawan, that's why yung ating, ano, yung ating mga cereal, may literal na bakal doon, as in namamagnet yun. Okay. Kasi pag napunta naman sa chan natin yung mga bakal na yun, magiging ion sila. No? For example, iron yun talaga. No? So pag nilunok mo yun, may iron 2 plus yun. Okay. So, and that will activate some of the enzymes sa ating katawan. Okay. So, yun. So, ano yung point natin dito? Kumain ng gulay para mabuhay. <laughs> okay? Yan. Yan, babansin nyo, di ba, pag di tayo nagugulay, parang pagod na pagod tayo. For example, ako ngayon, <laughs> ah, parang it's been last year, no, kain ako, kain ako ng kain ng gulay, never ako nagkasakit, no? As in, last year, uh, halos wala akong sakit, no? Starting March until... Uh, let's say, September. Kaya, puro gulay talaga diet ko nun. No? Ayan, uh, hindi ako nagkakasakit. Tapos nung tinamad na ako maggulay. <laughs> Sabi ko, namimiss ko yung ano, ah, yung mga karne-karne. So, yun, puro karne naman ako nung ano, September, October, November. Ayan, nagkasakit na ako. <laughs> so, bakit na? Kasi siguro nakulangan ako ng cofactor sa aking body. Kaya, yun. Hindi napalitan yung mga lumang cells sa body ko. No? Kaya, nagkasakit ako. Okay? 
So, yun. So, kailangan balance diet tayo always. Okay? So, yung coenzymes naman, para siyang cofactor din, pero when you say coenzyme, ito ay organic molecules naman. Okay? Cofactor, inorganic, is in metal lang talaga. Pag coenzyme, organic or metal or organic molecules. Okay? So, ito yung isang coenzymes natin. And... Ito yung mga naitutulong nila sa ating body. So, yung coenzymes, ito yung examples ng vitamins. No? Kaya kailangan natin ng vitamins. Okay? So, yan. So, other than the metals, kailangan natin ng vitamins to activate some of the enzymes in our body. Okay? So, yan yung ilang example. Okay. So, yun. Ay, itong FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide. I think this is used sa electron transport chain. Kaya diba kapag minsan malala yun, sakit natin, nare-resetahan tayo ng vitamin B complex. Okay. Kung napapansin nyo lang, ha, kasi ha, ako, ako kasi, medyo marami akong history ng sakit dati. No? Kasi, kasi kung ano-anong street foods kinakain ko nung bata ako, no? So, papansin ko nun, pag may sakit-sakit ka, bibigyan ka ng reseta ng vitamin na B-complex. No? Kasi yung vitamin B, yung magbibigay sila ng enzymes, no? they will activate the enzymes necessary sa uh, energy production ng cell para hindi ka manlata. No? Okay. So, yun yung ating point dito. Okay. So, again, our enzymes, they lower the activation energy. And sometimes our enzymes doesn't uh, uh, doesn't function at the very start, no? So it has to be activated. So enzymogen, enzymogen, ito yung inactive precursor of the enzyme. In order to activate that, you have to cut some bonds sa inyong molecule. May kailangan kaputulan. However, for apo enzymes, kailangan may idagdag ka lang sa active site para gumana na siya as one functional uh, one functional enzyme or called the holo enzyme. So ano yung dinadagdag sa apo enzyme para siya ay maging holo enzyme? Yan ay cofactors which is metals and coenzyme which is organic metalloorganic molecules now in the form of vitamins. Ang cofactor ay minerals now. So yan. So, kumain kayo ng healthy para hindi magkasakit. Okay? Ayan. And also, yung enzymes natin, pwede rin magkaroon niya ng mga prosthetic groups, no? So, parang tao lang yan na may prosthetics, no? For that person to function well, it needs prosthetics minsan, no? Yung ating molecules, ganun din, no? So, minsan hindi gagana yung molecule uh, without the prosthetic groups, no? For example, yung ating heme group, no? Okay. Sa ating hemoglobin, ang prosthetic group niya ay mga heme, heme molecules, no? So, this is organometallic molecule. And in the presence of heme, our hemoglobin will work, no? Okay. So, yun. Kasi kapag walang heme sa ating hemoglobin, patay na tayo. Matagal na tayong deaths. Okay? So, yan. So, again, so, ano yung mga pwede idagdag sa ating enzyme? Pwedeng cofactor, pwedeng coenzyme, and sometimes kailangan natin ng prosthetic groups in order to uh, to allow the enzyme to function or to allow the protein to function in general. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, ano takeaways dito? Kumain kayo ng gulay, ha? Yun lang. Okay. So, just like any other proteins, ang ating enzyme may activity yan. Ibig sabihin, depending on the nature of its environment, its activity could be high or low. Ibig sabihin, it may work, it may not. No? And kung ano yung mga factors that affect the proteins, ganun din yung factors that affect the enzyme activity. Yung kanyang ano, kanyang uh, behavior, kung gagana ba siya or hindi. No? So, ito yung mga factors that affect the enzyme activity. We have the temperature, the pH, the substrate, concentration, and the enzyme concentration. Okay? So, let's talk about temperature. Okay. 
So the optimum temperature for our enzymes to work is the normal body temperature. Okay, kaya tayo ay 36 point something degrees. No? Kasi yun yung optimum temperature para mag-work yung ating enzymes. No? As you can see, if your temperature goes higher, the activity of enzyme, ano, laki ng steep pababa, no? Ibig sabihin nun, our enzymes may get denatured no? at super high temperatures. No? That's why kapag nagkakalagnat tayo, feel natin latang-lata tayo kasi yung mga enzymes sa ating body, hindi sila ganun nagpa-function. No? Okay? So, hindi sila ganun nagpa-function, bumababa yung kanilang activity. That's why nanlalata tayo. No? And if ikaw, tumaas pa yung temperature mo beyond 50 and never naman nangyayari yan so far. Yan, madadads ka na. Patay lahat ng enzymes mo. Okay? Denatured lahat ng enzyme molecules mo sa body. Okay? So, yun. Yun yung reason bakit kapag nilalagnat tayo, nanlalata tayo is because of at higher temperature, the enzyme activity will drop. Ibig sabihin yung mga normal processes sa body mo, maglo-lower down sila ng production. However, at colder temperature, medyo similar din yung trend. However, the uh, graph is smoother. No? Ayan. So, smoother siya. So, hindi drastic yung transition. No? Yeah, for example, yung mga bears, no? Kunwari, ito yung optimum body temperature niya. Pag taglamig, dahan-dahan hihina siya until siya ay mag-hibernate, no? Pero it doesn't mean napatay siya, no? <laughs> Bumaba lang yung mga enzyme activity. So, uh, when the temperature increases, no? Tataas na yung enzyme activity niya. So, yan. Magigising na uli yung ating mga bears, no? Okay. So, ganun. Basta ang idea lang dito, too much high temperature will be deadly for our body. Kasi, as you can see, steep drop yung ating enzyme activity primarily because of denaturation. So, in this graph naman, we have the optimum pH and the optimum pH is around 7.4. No? That's the pH of our body kasi, yung optimum pH. Uh, when you increase the pH, what happens to the proteins? Instead na maging sweeter ion sila, nagkakaroon sila ng charges, no? Okay, so yun. At, at different pHs, pwede magkaroon ng charges yung ating protein. And yun, as a result, the shape may be affected. For enzymes, ganun din. Pag tinaasa mo yung pH masyado or binabaan nyo yung pH masyado, yung ating enzyme mismo, since protein yan, pwede magkaroon niya ng charges, no? So, as a result, magbabago yung, ano, magbabago yung 3D structure ng enzyme natin. Kasi protein yan eh. Pwede dumagdag yung ionic interaction. So, magbabago ng change, uh, magbabago ng shape yung ating enzyme. As a result, the activity will be lower. Okay? So, pwede at higher pH or lower pH, yung active side, since nagka-charges yun, mas lalong liliit sila. Kasi, may mga charges na dun eh. Pwede magdikit sila. So, as a result, bababa yung ating activity. Okay? So, ito naman, we have the graph of reaction rate and the substrate concentration, meaning reactant, ito yung activity ng enzyme, yung nakared. As you can see here, the activity of enzyme plateaus no? when we increase the substrate concentration. Uh, ang logic natin dyan is imagine nyo kayo yung cashier. Tapos, uh, kayo lang talaga yung cashier, ang tao ay 5,000. Yung output mo, constant na yon let's say 1 client per minute, yun na talaga yung output mo. No? Kahit damihan mo pa yung substrates mo or damihan mo pa yung mga clients mo. Okay, kasi yun lang kasi kaya ng enzyme. Ibig sabihin, that means our enzyme has the saturation point. No? Ibig sabihin, it will plateau. Yung speed niya magpa-plateau kapag na-reach niya, niya yung saturation point niya. Ibig sabihin, sobrang dami ng clients. So, ano, consistent na lang yung kanyang activity. Okay. So, yan. However, pag yung enzymes naman dinagdagan natin, the reaction will steadily increase. Siyempre, mga na-red, nagdagdag tayo ng dalawang cashier na, 
Uh, bibilis na. Ano, rin, tatlong cashier na. Apat. Di ba? Mas lalong bibilis yung speed na. Okay. So, ang idea dito sa dalawang table, uh, dalawang graph below about the substrate concentration and the enzyme concentration is that kapag yung substrate mo, yung reactant, dinagdagan mo, magpa-plato yung enzyme activity mo. So, na-reach niya, niya yung limit. Hindi na niya pwede taasan pa yung limit na yun kasi limit niya eh. Okay. However, kapag dinagdaga mo pa yan ng enzyme, edi tataas lalo yung activity niya. Tataas lalo yung reaction rate niya. Okay. So, those are the four factors that affect the activity of the enzymes. No? So, we have the temperature. Higher temperature will cause a steep drop in the enzyme activity. Partly because it the enzyme may become denatured. No? Okay. Or kapag lower din yung temperature, um, bababa yung enzyme activity. No? So, one of the reasons may be mababa yung kinetic energy so that the uh, so that the substrate may not uh, may not go to the active site uh, quickly, no? kaya bababa onte yung uh, yung enzyme activity. For pH naman, one of the primary reason dito is possible na mag-induce ng charges yung ibat ibang pH, no? other than the optimum pH for that enzyme. So kapag nadagdagan siya ng charges, pwedeng mag-affect yung charge na yon sa ating enzyme structure. Pwede mag-close yung active site. So, ibig sabihin, wala na. Hindi nagagana yung enzyme. Okay? Kasi naka-close na yung active site. Eh. Or pwedeng lumiit yung active site. And so on, so forth. Okay? When it comes to substrate concentration, when we increase the substrate concentration, the enzyme activity plateaus. No? Nagpa-flat siya. Kasi may limit na. Hindi na niya kaya. No? Parang tayo lang yan, no? isang damukal na activity si binigay sa atin. Gagawin natin, oh, isang activity kada araw, di ba? Okay. So, ganun lang. And kapag dinamihan naman natin yung enzyme concentration, the activity will steadily increase. Siyempre, mas maraming enzyme, mas maraming magagawa. Kaya steady lang yung increase dyan. So now, let's focus on this. No? Kasi this one is quantifiable. Okay. Yung substrate concentration and the speed of the reaction. Okay. So, sabi dito, at constant enzyme concentration, increasing the substrate concentration will produce a saturation curve. Okay. Ibig sabihin nun, nagpa-flat siya, or ibig sabihin, nagsasaturate siya. And this curve is called the saturation curve. And as you can see, meron tayong limit which is called the Vmax, that is the maximum speed of the reaction or maximum velocity of the reaction. For every enzyme, there is a corresponding Vmax for them. Okay? Same. Okay? And, yan. So, if you get the half of the speed, the X value will correspond to the Km or the kinetic activator constant. Oh, mamaya, pag-usapan natin yung Km na yan. And then, there's also a turnover number. Ang turnover number, it tells us kung ilang substrate molecule yung matatransform per minute. Although, hindi na tayo mag-focus dito. So, ang idea lang is that from this graph here, yung rate ng speed and the, ends, uh, and the substrate concentration, we can actually measure kung hanggang kailan lang yung kaya ng enzyme, ganun kabilis yung kaya, kaya niya na speed lang. Okay. And with all those idea about the speed of reaction, we can talk about the enzyme kinetics na. Okay? So again, paano tayo napunta doon bigla? Uh, tinignan natin yung effect ng substrate concentration sa enzyme activity. Sabi natin, when we increase the substrate concentration, yung speed ng reaction nagpa-flat. Okay? So since this is quantifiable, may sabihin na may measure, Let's talk about enzyme kinetics kasi yun yung, yun yung topic niya. Okay. So sabi natin kanina pa that the rate of reaction of the enzyme can be determined by the activation energy. Okay. So enzymes, they speed up the reaction by providing transition states. No? So for example, you have here the enzyme and the substrate. So magsasama sila to form the enzyme substrate con uh, complex. And then later on, yung enzyme and yung substrate, maghihiwalay sila to produce the enzyme and the products. Na. Okay? 
So with some math equations, hindi ko na ipapakita yung math equations, we can derive this, no? On this equation. This is called the Michaelis-Menten equation. Um, itong topic na to, but hindi ko papakita yung derivation kasi it requires knowledge about chemical equilibrium reaction rates, no? And some uh, concept from thermochemist, uh, thermodynamics, no? So, skip na natin yung part na yan. Although, masaya to i-derive na. Okay. So, if we have enzyme and substrate, they will mix to form the enzyme substrate complex and then later on, it will produce the products. Okay. This equation is called the Michaelis-Menten equation. This describes the speed of the overall reaction from here to there. Okay. So, VO is the initial velocity of reaction. Vmax is the maximum velocity, which corresponds to the plateau in our curve. S is the concentration of the substrate, and Km is the Michaelis-Menten constant, or the kinetic activator constant. Okay? So, from this, makakuha tayo ng iba't ibang idea about the enzyme behavior. Okay? Sorry. So, ano yung idea na pwede natin makuha dito sa graph na to? Ano yung mapapansin natin na behavior ng ating enzyme by just looking at this graph? Okay. So, when we say our S is less than the Km, the Michaelis-Menten constant, the rate of reaction is first order. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, the rate of reaction is first order, meaning non, that, uh, that the rate of reaction will increase with the increase of the substrate concentration. Okay, in equation that is rate equals K times S, no? where K is the constant. However, when our S is greater than the Km na, then the rate of the reaction is in zero order. Meaning ng zero order, kahit dagdagan mo pa yung enzyme, uh, kahit dagdagan mo pa yung substrate mo, wala nang magagawa doon. Flat na talaga yung curve. Okay? And then when... Uh, when S is equals to Km, then mathematically, the speed of reaction is equal to half of the maximum limit. Okay? So again, ano yung idea na pwede natin makuha dito? If our substrate concentration is less than Km, then we follow the first order kinetics. That means the speed of reaction will increase when we increase the substrate concentration. However, if we surpass the substrate concentration compared to your Km, pag lumagpas na tayo dun sa Km value, yung ating substrate concentration, making zero order na yung kinetics ng ating uh, reaction. Ibig sabihin, dagdagan mo pa yan ng substrate, wala nang mangyayari. Ibig sabihin, this linear curve here is the first order curve and itong flat dito, ito yung zero order curve na. So, this is actually useful when we study enzymes. No? Kunwari, malay nyo, in the future, mag-shift kayo ng career from education to research. Pwede yun. Okay? So, magagamit nyo to when you want to characterize the enzymes in the body. No? So, kunwari, gusto nyo ma-optimize yung ano, enzyme function, eh, di pwede hanggang dito lang yung substrate concentration mo. So, if you exceed that, masasaturate yung enzyme mo. Okay, so, hindi na niya kakayanin pa mag-produce ng products. Okay? So, again, ano yung kwento lang ng Michaelis-Menten equation? This equation shows us the limits of our enzyme catalysis activity. No? Pinapakita niya kung hanggang saan lang yung mga pwedeng values. No? Kung kailan siya mag-start masaturate, kailan siya hindi siya masasaturate. No? So, from this graph, we can get the Km, okay? So, the Km, ito yung parang basis natin. When our concentration of sub substrate is lower than Km, linear pa yung ano, reaction ng ating, ano, ng ating reactants sa enzyme. However, kapag greater na yung concentration ng substrate than the Km, ayun, na overwhelm na yung enzymes. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi nyo niya kaya. No? So, ang gano'n na. Ang gano'n na lang yung limit niya. So, huwag ka na magdagdag pag gano'n. Okay. So, ginagamit to ng mga scientists kapag inaaral nila yung, ano, let's say yung glycolysis dati. 
na so if they want to determine kung paano ma-control yung glycolysis Krebs cycle yan ginagamit nila yung enzyme catalysis even yung ano even sa mga gamot-gamot no for example antihistamine no so yun so na ito yung mga equation na nakakatulong sa kanila to tell kung ano dapat yung dosage ng mga gamot no etc okay so yun although mababasa natin this is a parabolic curve no Uh, and dealing with parabolic curve is very hard, even in mathematics, because complicated equations meron tayo dyan. So what what other people did, no? Si Line Weaver and si Burke, no? They just get the reciprocal of the michaelis menten equation, and they got a linear equation. Okay. So, yan. Ano nung ginawa nila? In inverse lang nila yung ano, michaelis menten constant. Okay? So, meaning nun, ginawa lang nilang uh, reciprocal lahat. No? So, nung ginawa nilang reciprocal lahat, what happened is that yung ating parabolic curve, it suddenly turned into a linear equation. And the linear equation will uh, much better help us no? in calculating for the parameters of the enzyme activity. Mas mabilis natin malalaman gano'ng kabilis yung kaya ng enzyme, kung ano yung KM niya. And ano yung, yan. So, doon natin mabilis malalaman kung ano yung Vmax niya and yung Km niya. Okay. So, again. So, we started with this equation. Parabolic yan. Ang problem, mahirap mag-deal with parabolic curves. Kaya ginawa ni Line Weaver Burke, ni reciprocal nila yon and they got a linear equation. This linear equation can be used to determine Km and the Vmax now. Dito natin pwede malaman yung KM and yung Vmax natin. Okay. So, ayan. So, saan pa natin magagamit yung ano, idea ng KM, Vmax, no? Saan natin magagamit yung mga ganung concept? We can use them sa in, uh, enzyme inhibition. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung mga gamot-gamot, para malaman nila gaano karaming gamot yung ibibigay sa inyo. So, yun. Ginagamit na nila ng michaelis menten equation or line weaver break equation. Okay. So, for example, enzyme inhibition, this is a process if you want to stop the function of the enzyme. Okay. Pwede mo lagyan nyo ng inhibitors. No? Sabi natin yung inhibitors, papasok siya sa allosteric site. No? Pero nalaman din natin na hindi lang pala yun yung mode niya, no? Hindi lang pala siya sa allosteric site pumapasok, no? Merong inhibitors na pumapasok mismo sa active site. And merong uh, inhibitors na pumapasok sa ano, allosteric site. And meron namang inhibitors na sumasapaw sa reaction to stop it, no? Okay. So, these are the types of inhibition. So, we have the irreversible inhibition and the reversible inhibition. So, when you say irreversible inhibition, ibig sabihin, totally deactivated yung enzyme. So, medyo mahirap yan. Okay, because may formation tayo ng new chemical bonds and as a result, mamamatay yung enzyme. Hindi na siya gagana. Ang focus ng ating mga gamot ay itong reversible inhibition. Something that can be reversed. So, there are... Three types of uh, reversible inhibition. We have the competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, and the uncompetitive inhibition. So, dito sa competitive inhibition, what happens here is that yung inhibitor molecule natin, yung gamot natin, they will block the active site no? para hindi pumasok yung substrate. Okay? So, they compete with the substrate. Okay? So, ganun. Pag non-competitive inhibition naman, what happens is that your inhibitor will bind to the allosteric site and that changes the shape of the active site so that the substrate will no longer be attached to it. No? Okay, so gagawin ng non-competitive inhibition ulit, yung inhibitor kakabit sa allosteric site, so magbabago yung shape ng ating active site. So since iba na yung shape ng active site, di na papasok yung substrate. So, walang enzyme kin uh, kinetics na mangyayari. Walang enzyme activity na mangyayari. 
And then last one, we have the uncompetitive inhibition. What happens here is that your inhibitor will bind to the site and to the ano, enzyme substrate complex. Na. And so parang sasapaw siya sa reaction. Okay, so I think visual, ano, visual idea lang. So for suppose atong red, ito yung enzyme natin. Okay. Ito, ito yung enzyme natin, itong red. Ayan. So kapag ito yung substrate, papasok siya doon. Pag meron tayong competitive na inhibitor, kunwari ito yung gamot, papasok siya sa enzyme, pipigilin niya yung uh, enzyme activity na yun. So ibig sabihin wala kang mapoproduce na products. Okay. So ayan. So, mahihinto yung pag-produce ng molecules. No? So, as a result, may corresponding nga mangyayari sa body natin. Okay. Kunwari, mga beta blockers. No? So, pwedeng sila yung nagbablock sa activation site. No? Active site. Kaya, nahihinto yung ano, high blood. Di ba? Okay. So, yung non-competitive inhibition naman sa allosteric site sa kakabit. Pag kumabit yan dito, magbabago yung shape na itong active site. So, since iba na yung shape niyan, yung substrate, di na siya kakabit doon. Kasi magbabago na yung shape ng ano, yung active site natin. And then, the last one, we have the uncompetitive inhibition. Uh, nangyari lang dito is yung inhibitor, kakabit siya sa enzyme substrate complex. No. So, since kumabit na siya sa enzyme substrate complex, hindi na magpo-form yung products. No. So, ganun lang. So again, paano natin malalaman yung types of inhibition uh, using the michaelis menten equation and the line weaver break Alamin lang natin yung KM and yung Vmax and that will give us an idea kung anong type ng inhibition yung nangyari. Okay, so saan ito ginagamit? Ginagamit ito sa gamot. No? Kaya, kunwari, uminom tayo ng ano, beta blockers. Biglang, ano, di ba? Biglang hindi na tayo na high blood, no? Minom ka antihistamine o nawawala yung allergy mo. Okay. So, may kinalaman yun about enzyme catalysis kasi. So, they prevent some chemical reaction that will trigger those responses. No? Kaya yan. So, for them to know gano'ng karaming kailangan nila ilagay, ginagamit nila yung line weaver -Berg equation. Okay. So, here are the parameters. We have the KM, the Vmax, and the slope okay, of the line weaver -Berg equation. Depending on the changes, we can tell whether the type of inhibition is competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive. Okay? So if yung KM natin nag-increase in the presence of inhibitor, that means competitive inhibition yun. Okay? Okay. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating inhibitor pumapasok siya sa active site. No? Okay. But if our KM did not change, ibig sabihin, non-competitive inhibition yun nangyari. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag non-competitive sa allosteric site, pumasok yung ating uh, inhibitor no, to prevent the reaction to occur. And yung KM, pag, di, pag bumaba yan, that is the uncompetitive inhibition. As a result, uh, kumakabit yung ating inhibitor sa enzyme substrate complex. As a, as a result, di, hindi rin mangyayari yung reaction. No? So, yan. By just Determining the changes in our parameters, KM, Vmax, and even the slope, we can tell whether the type of inhibition is competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive. And depending on the type of inhibition, we can create drugs out of it. No? We can create drugs that prevent uh, hypertension, uh, even yung sa ano, even yung sa iba pang diseases such as allergies. No? So, yan or mga lung infections na no? so yun so yun okay so let's have some example apply natin yung concept na yun okay so from this info we have so ito yung uh, ito yung substrate concentration ito yung ano ito yung speed without inhibitor and ito yung speed with inhibitor let's determine the km the vmax and the type of inhibition Okay, so try down natin to. This is the substrate concentration. This is the uh, speed of the reaction without inhibitor. And this is the speed of reaction with inhibitor. So from all this, kunin natin yung Vmax, KM, and inhibitor type.
So, for this type of problem, kakailangan natin yung line weaver Burke equation. Okay, this can be described by the equation of the line. Um, ito yung y. Ito yung m. Ito yung x plus b. Okay. So, wala ako sa iPad, kaya ganyan sulat ko. Okay. So, the line, uh, the line weaver Burke equation can be described by linear equation y equals mx plus b. So, the y-axis corresponds to the inverse of the speed. The slope corresponds to the km divided by the vmax. The x-axis is the inverse of the substrate concentration. And the slope, uh, I mean the intercept, is the inverse of the vmax. From all this information, makukuha natin yung km and vmax. Okay? And that will give us an idea kung anong type ng inhibition yung ginawa ng drugs natin. So, yan. so let's try this problem no? So ito kakailangan natin kakailangan natin ng Excel dito. Okay. Kaya ganun yung gagawin niyo sa quiz. So palitan ko lang yung screen share ko. Nasa second screen kasi kaya nakatingin eh. So share ko tong main screen ko. Ayun. Yan. So, feeling ko nakikita nyo na naman, ba? So, ito yung ating, ano, ito yung ating substrate concentration. Okay? So, ito yung substrate concentration natin. Ayan. This is the speed of the reaction without inhibitor. This is the speed of the reaction without inhibitor. From all this information, let's identify what type of inhibition yung ginawa ng ating inhibitor. Okay? And that will actually help us, no, to design better drugs, no, in addressing some diseases. Okay. So, sabi ko sa inyo, ang important equation natin dito is the line weaver break equation. So, that is 1 over V equals Km over Vm, 1 over S plus Vm. Okay. So, the y-intercept will be this one. This is the slope. This is the... This is the tawag dito. The x axis and this is the y intercept. So ibig sabihin pag green off natin to, linear dapat 'yan. Pag ito green off natin, this will be ano, this will be plateau, no. So kung gusto niyo itignan, so highlight natin yung cell na 'yan, insert, then graph tayo scatter plot. Okay? So as you can see, um Format ko lang yung ating, ano, format ko lang yung ating curve. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, if we graph the substrate and the speed of the reaction, ang nangyayari is, yung ating curve, it resembles the michaelis menten curve, di ba? So, ito yung curve na yun. Ayan. So, di ba parang nagre-resemble siya dito? Pakita ko sa inyo. Okay. So, ayan na. So, yung ating curve, it resembles the michaelis menten curve. No? So, somewhere there, magpa-plateau siya. However, sabi ko nga sa inyo, mahirap mag-work mag with, ano, with curves. No? We want straight lines. That's why we will use the um, line weaver break equation. So, to convert this graph into a linear equation, ganito gagawin nyo, no? So, yung ating substrate concentration, i-inverse natin yan. When you say inverse, i-reciprocal mo lang yan. So, ano yung inverse ng 3? It will be 1 over 3, okay? So, 1 over 3 yan. I-inverse mo lang. So, gagawin nyo sa Excel. Ganito gagawin nyo at ano yun? Ganito yung gagawin nyo sa quiz. So, you inverse the our S concentration. Okay. So, yan. Yan yung ating concentration ng S. And then, i-drag nyo na lang siya pababa. Nawala yung cell. Okay. So, ganun lang gagawin nyo yan. You're, you're just going to get the inverse. No? Ayan. Then, yung ating velocity, i-inverse din natin yan. Okay? So, 1 over the original velocity. Ganon din gagawin natin dyan. 
And same thing as for those with inhibitor. Okay. So again, ano yung idea? Ang idea is, i-inverse mo lahat. Yung, yung, ano, yung subsert concentration, i-inverse mo. Yung velocity without inhibitor, inverse mo. And the velocity with inhibitor, i-inverse mo rin. Kasi yun yung sabi dito. Oh. Inverse ng velocity yung y-axis. Inverse ng, inverse ng substrate concentration yung x-axis. So, from this, we can actually graph them. Ang igagraph muna, uh, ang igagraph ko muna ay ito. Yung substrate pati yung without inhibitor. And then later on, yung substrate with inhibitor. Okay? So, paano mag-graph niyan? No? Of course, highlight your cells. Okay? Highlight your cell. Insert. Then, punta kay sa charts. Then, scatter plots. Okay? So, again, balik ulit tayo. Highlight your data. Go to insert. Then, scatter. Uh, charts, then scatter. Okay. And this is our line weaver break equation. Hard curve. So, on the y-axis, ano to? Uh, kung gusto nyo malaman, you just se uh, select the data. And then, so obvious naman. So on the y-axis, ito yung ating um, napagbaliktad ko ba yung x and y. Ang feeling ko napagbaliktad ko yung x and y. Uh, ganito na lang gawin nyo. Huwag muna ninyo i-highlight pala. Huwag kayo muna mag-highlight. Just go to charts, then scatter. So hayaan mo muna maging blank yan. Then you select your data. So, sa data, so, mag add ako dito ng series. Okay? So, series name, no inhibitor. Ano yung x values ko? Ang x values ko would be the inverse of the concentration of substrate. And yung y value ko, that will be the inverse of the velocity without inhibitor. Ayun. Okay? Ayan. So, ito na yung curve ng ating, ito na yung line weaver curve natin. So, let me add the trend line lang. Right click. Napindot ko ba yung right click? Ayan. Right click and add trend line linear. So, yan, yan na yung line weaver break curve without inhibitor. Okay? So, ayan. Again, try naman natin yung with inhibitor. Okay? So, with inhibitor naman, gawin nyo. Go to insert. Select nyo yung scatter plot uli. Eh, but may data na dun. May sinek. Okay? So, go to insert. Go to scatter. Okay? So, blank yan. So, yung blank na chart mo, select data kayo. Okay? So, select nyo yung blank na chart, then select data. So, add kayo ng another entry. Series name with inhibitor. So, on the x-axis, piliin mo yung cell. Substrate concentration pa rin yun. And on the y-axis, you name velocity with inhibitor. Okay. So, yan. Okay na tayo dyan. Then, para magkalain yan, you press the dot, right click, press add trend line. Yan, may line ka na. If you want to show the equation of the line, click nyo lang dito sa right side. Yung display R squared, pati yung display equation on chart. So, ganun din gawin nyo dito. Select the line, check nyo yung display equation and display R squared. Okay. So, ayan. So, ayan. So, we have the line weaver Burke equations. No? For the two. With inhibitor and without inhibitor. Okay? 
Ano gagawin natin dito? Uh, from this, kunin natin yung KM and yung VM ng without inhibitor pati with inhibitor. Okay? So, let me just write the equation of the line dito. Teka lang. Dito. Hopefully, nasa laptop kayo na. No? Mamaya, bigyan ko kayo chance kayo naman yung magtatry. Tanong nyo na rin kapag may question kayo dito. Marunong naman kayo siguro mag-graph na sa Excel. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin ngayon is, from our two graphs, kukunin natin yung KM pati yung VM. Okay? So, ayun. Paano natin kukunin yung KM and yung VM from our graph? Okay. So, yung VM, paano mo siya makukuha? This is y. Teka lang. So, this is y. Ito yung y. Ito yung m. Yan yung slope. Ito yung x. Ito yung b. So, anong parameter dito sa ating equation yung tutulong sa atin to get the VM? Is it the y? Is it, well, is it the m? Is it the x? Is it the b? Ano kaya? Ang sagot doon ay yung B, yung intercept. No? Kasi sabi natin, whatever the intercept of our curve is, that corresponds to the inverse of Vmax. No? So if you want to get the Vm, i-inverse mo lang din yung inyong intercept. No? Paki-inverse itong intercept na to. So that's 1 over 0 0.0629. Okay. So, Vm is the inverse of, uh, sa so no inhibitor tayo. Pag inverse, sa, ano lang yan, 1 over ito. Ang ating intercept dito ay 0 0.0629. So, yan na yung Vm natin. Yan na yung maximum speed ng reaction. 15.90 millimoles per minute. For no inhibitor. How about with inhibitor? Okay. So, gagawin nyo, for without inhibitor naman, i-inverse mo yung intercept nun. Okay. So, that will be 1 over 0 0.784. Okay ng difference, ha? Ay, kulang pala ako ng isa pang zero. Uh, 0. 0.0784 pala. Okay, so yan. So, anong pansin nyo? Um, with inhibitor, yung VM natin ay bumaba. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, may nangyaring inhibition talaga, no? Kasi so, nagbago yung ating parameter for the maximum velocity. So, from 15, naging 12 na lang siya. Yan. So, yung VM natin, bumaba kapag may inhibitor tayo. So, ano pa? KM naman natin. KM. About the KM. Paano natin makukuha yung KM? Yung KM ay makukuha from the slope. Okay? So, in equation, I can write it as ganito. Teka lang. Type ko na lang. Ang slope ay equal sa KM divided by VM. Eh, di ba alam mo na yung VM value? So, to solve for KM, that is just ano? KM equals M times the slope times the VM. Okay? So, alam mo na yung VM Nireciprocal mo na yung ating intercept. Ganun lang gagawin nyo. So, kung ano yung intercept na lumabas doon, i-reciprocal nyo lang. That's 1 over this number. Uh, and also, 1 over this number here. So, that's your VM na. 
maximum velocity. Mansin nyo bumaba. How about the km? So to get the km, you're, you're going to multiply the slope of the equation by the vm. Okay? So multiply natin. Yung slope nato according to our equation, is 0 0.4665 times the vm. So ganun din dito. Yung slope ng width inhibitor is 0 0.5846 times yung VM. Okay? So, yan. So, again, to get the KM, multiply the slope of the equation given dito. Yan. Slope yan. Multiply mo yung slope nyan by the VM na nakuha ninyo. And for width inhibitor, ganun din, you multiply this slope by the VM. Again, paano nakuha yung VM? Inverse yun ng intercept. So, itong 0 .01, uh, 0 0.0629, i-inverse nyo yan. So, that will become 1 divided by 0 0.0629. Makuha nyo 15.90. So, ganun din sa width inhibitor. Inverse mo yung intercept na to. So, that will be in equation 1 divided by 0 0.0784. And you will get the VM. Okay? So, from these two parameters, uh, lagay din natin slope. No? So, ang slope sa without inhibitor ay 0 0.4665. So, with inhibitor, 0 0.5846. From these parameters, no, alamin natin kung anong type of inhibition nangyari. Type of inhibition. Is it competitive? Is it uncompetitive? Uh, Non-competitive? Or uncompetitive? Okay. So, alamin natin whether that is competitive, uncompetitive, or non-competitive. Okay. So, paano natin malalaman? Let's compare the VM, KM, and the slope without and with the inhibitor. Okay. So, sa VM, ano nangyari? In the presence of inhibitor, VM decreased. So, in the presence of inhibitor, VM decreased. Bumaba yung VM. How about the KM? So, yung KM, virtually the same pa rin yan halos. Okay? Uh, almost the same, sabihin natin. Ito so, siguro yung question dito, no? Kailangan mo, sir, masasabi kung same yan. Ganito lang, kapag same yung unang number nila, no? Kunwari, 7 point something. Tapos yun sa 7.40 something lang din. Yung pag 7.4 to, 7.4 din yun, almost the same na yan. May onting difference sa KM, yes, pero they are almost the same. Kasi pareha silang 7.4, eh. Okay? So, ganun natin siya irurule, no? Ano, medyo mataas tolerance natin dito. So, yung mga minor differences, especially sa decimal, pag onti lang yung difference ng decimal nila, we can say na almost the same. Yan. Okay, so, we can say unchanged yung KM natin. How about the slope? O, obvious naman, it increased. No? In the presence of inhibitor. Okay? So, from this, balikan natin yung table na Meron tayo sa PowerPoint. Ito yun. Zoom in ko. Ayan. So, from this, uh, from our info na nakuha sa Excel, yung VM bumaba, yung KM almost the same kasi pa almost 7.4 sila parehas. Then yung slope nag-increase. Anong type ng inhibition meron dito? KM hindi nagbago. VM, bumaba, slope, tumaas. That is non-competitive inhibition. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, the type of inhibition is non-competitive. So, paano natin mando-describe yung ano? Paano natin mando-describe yung effect ng inhibitor? Ano ginawa ng inhibitor sa ating 
enzyme. Ang ginawa ng inhibitor sa ating enzyme is that kumabit siya sa allosteric site. No? So, yun yung conclusion natin dito. Yung inhibitor kumabit <laughs> sa English na lang. Inhibitor attach siya. Uh, So, ayan. Sabihin na lang natin, inhibitor is in allosteric site. No? Okay? So, okay. From this idea, pwede na tayo makagawa ng iba't ibang drugs for different diseases. No? So, ayan. So, ganun. Depende sa purpose ng drugs yung ano, requirement. Kung kailangan ba, mataas yung BM, bumaba ba. So, yung mga pharmacists na nakakaalam yan. Okay? So, ayan. So, from this, may kita natin yung effect ng inhibitors with the speed of the reaction. And from those info, we can tell whether we have competitive inhibition. Ibig sabihin, yung inhibitor na sa active site. Non-competitive inhibition, kapag yung uh, inhibitor na sa allosteric site. And uncompetitive, kapag yung inhibitor na sa... Uh, nasa enzyme substrate complex okay so in our case non competitive to so we can say that the inhibitor is in the allosteric site okay now kuha pa tayong isa pang example right etong sucrose kay na siguro bahala dito Uh, gawa na lang uli kayo, katulad ng ginagawa natin sa Oric Chem. So, punta kayo sa canvas. Show nyo na lang yung answer nyo dito. Naka-Excel file din na. Pwede ba yun? Tiga lang. Tignan ko kung pwede. Nandito sa discussions, pwede ba mag-comment dito? Nung file. Ayan, pwede naman pala ata mag-comment ng file. Ayan. So, doc. So, magdagawa ako dito ng ano, ng thread, no? For enzyme, enzymes natin. Enzyme activity. So, sagutan nyo na lang itong question na to. Yung sa sucrose. Sucrose, sa common sugar. So, ipakita nyo yung graph. Bigyan ko kayo ng sample ng graph nito mamaya para may reference na kayo. Uh, para ipa-plug nyo na lang. Although, it will be better kung alamin nyo pa rin kung paano gumawa ng graph na yan. Okay. So, using the data here, the concentration of the substrate, the velocity without inhibitor, and the velocity with inhibitor, alamin nyo kung anong type ng inhibition yung ginawa ng urea. Is it competitive, non-competitive, or uncompetitive? Kayo na bahala. Okay? So, magbibigay pa ako isang example. This one. Okay. For the following reaction in the presence of inhibitor, determine KM with, uh, and whether the inhibition is competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive. Okay? So, ang inhibitor daw natin ay hydroxymethyl aspartate. Okay? Tignan natin yung effect niya sa ARP aspartase. So, plug-in ko yan sa aking Excel. Duduplicate ko na lang to ha. Kasi I already have my curve eh. Ganito lang din gagawin yung sa quiz. Yan. Palitan ko to. Okay. So, ano yung... S ko with inhibitor, substrate concentration with inhibitor, ah, and then substrate concentration lang, 1 times 10 raised to negative 4, so that will be 0 0.1234, 5 times 10 raised to negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1.5 times 10 raised to negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 2.5 times 10 raised to negative 3. Gagawin nyo talagang decimal yan. 1, 2, 3. And then, 5 times 10 raised to negative 3. Gawin nyo rin decimal. 2, 3. 
So, these are our substrate concentration in molarity. Okay, nakamolarity yan. So, kapag in-inverse natin yan, that's 1 over molar. Okay. Okay, so velocity, no inhibitor in arbitrary units. That will be 0 0.026. Uh, 0 0.029, 0 0.136, 0 0.150, 0 0.165. Then with inhibitor, ano nangyari sa mga velocity? Nagbago. So in the presence of inhibitor, 0 0.01 na lang siya. 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 6, 0 0.12. 0 0.142. Okay. So, yan. Ay, may graph na tayo agad. Diba? Kasi nakasetup na siya kanina pa eh. <laughs> okay. Um, kalang. Anong data point to? Let me verify lang kung tama yung data na na-type ko. Oh, kasi baka mamaya mali yung napindot ko eh. Zero, zero, two, six. Zero, ah, zero point zero ninety two pala to. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Palang weird ng graph. Okay. Ayun. So, okay na yung graph natin. So, yan. So, we just graphed yung ating data and automatically yung Excel nag-fill out na siya ng info for us about the inverse of the X and the inverse of the Y axis. So, ang gagawin na lang natin is to get the VM and the KM with and without the inhibitor using the graph here. Okay. So, again, VM can be obtained by getting the inverse of the intercept so that will be 1 divided by 5.0575 for no inhibitor. And for with inhibitor, that will be 1 divided by 5.2145. Okay. KM. Ang ating KMI. Ang ating KMI slope times the velocity max, the Vm. So the slope for no inhibitor is 0 0.0033 times the Vm for no inhibitor. And for in, with inhibitor, that will be 0 0.0095 times the Vm. Damihan natin ng digits to. Ang damihan natin. So, yan. And then, for the slope, kopyahin lang natin, 0033, 0 0.0095. So, gawin na natin four decimal places to. Okay. So, from all this info, let us, ano, let us judge them. I-judge na natin sila. Okay. So, what happened to the VM? Okay. So, ang nangyari sa VM natin this time, since mga decimal values to, compared sa kanina, ha? Di ba kanina may whole number? Ngayon, since may decimal tayo, yung ating decimal units, they matter na. Okay. So, magmamatter na sila. Kasi kanina, whole na, ano tayo, may integer values, eh. Kaya kahit i-neglect mo na yung decimal, okay lang. Pero ngayon kasi, hindi ganun yung case natin. Magkaiba yung 77 sa 18 doon. Okay? So, from this, uh, check natin yung changes sa ating inhibition. So, ang VM natin ay masasabi natin na nag-decrease. No? Okay, so, pinapattern ko siya dito sa ating table eh. 
Okay, so ang BM ay... Teka lang. Okay, so for the VM, we can say na siya ay nag-decrease uh, nag onte. Decrease. Ang KM natin ay tumaas, increase. And yung slope natin ay nagtaas din, increase. Okay. So, ayan yung mga nangyari sa ating value. So, the VM decreased, the KM increased, and the, K, uh, and the slope also increased. No? So, anong type ng inhibition meron tayo? Okay. So, balik ulit tayo sa ating table kanina. Okay. So, balik ulit tayo sa table. So, ito yung ating table. Dito natin malalaman kung anong type ng inhibition yung nangyari. So, the KM and the M decrease, uh, increase. So, tumaas yung KM, pati yung slope. Yung VM nag-decrease. No? However, mamamansin natin dito sa competitive. Okay. So, tataas daw yung KM, tataas yung slope. Pero yung VM, dapat di siya magbago. Pero nangyari sa atin, nagbago siya. So, paano natin i-rule out yung ganito? No? Okay, normal to kasi decimal yung usapan natin eh. Pag usapang decimal, kailangan natin i-consider yung mga yun eh. No? So, ganito yung magiging ruling natin kasi most likely may encounter nyo rin to. Suppose yung dalawang criteria dito sa table na meet natin, then kung anong type ng inhibition yung na meet yun, yun na yung kanyang type mismo. Okay, so dito sa competitive, two out of the three categories, no? 2 out of the 3 parameters yung na-meet natin. Yung KM nag-increase, yung slope nag-increase. Yung VM, pwede na natin to i-discard na. Okay. So, that means the mode of inhibition here is competitive. No? So, so, pwede, let's say ito ay negligible na lang. No? Kasi yung dalawang criteria na-meet natin yan. Eh. Check yan sa atin sa table. Eh. Okay. So, yung VM kahit i-disregard na lang natin. Although different siya dito sa table, yung other two naman na meet natin. Kaya, sige, we will consider that as competitive. No? Okay. So, ganito talaga yung nangyayari dito. Especially kapag may decimal yung ating uh, numbers. No? Okay. So, since we just found out that the mode of inhibition ng ating, ano, the mode of inhibition of this enzyme, hydroxymethyl aspartate. Ang mode of inhibition niya ay competitive. So that gives us an idea that yung hydroxymethyl aspartate ay nasa active site. Okay. So yan yung ating conclusion. The the inhibitor methoc uh, hydroxymethyl aspartate is in the active site. Okay, so again, pag may namit kayo dito sa problem na to, pag sa problem na to may nasolve kayo na yung dalawa na sa table pero yung isa wala, no? i-rule out nyo na kung ano yung nasunod na dalawa, yun yung type ng inhibition niya. Okay? So ganun, ganun yung ginawa natin dito. Eh. So, sabi dito sa competitive, no change dapat. However, in our case, nag-decrease siya. And na-meet naman natin yung other two, kaya okay lang. So, we can con uh, we can conclude that this is competitive inhibition and the inhibitor is in the active site. Okay? So, yun. Uh, kapag gagawa na kayo neto, kung may tanong kayo, message nyo lang ako, ha? Uh, although, I will give you a copy of this, ano, of this worksheet na no? save ko na lagay ko na sa ating post doon sample calculation so, pwede ito na rin yung gamitin yung pattern although mas maganda kung alam nyo uh, alam nyo gumawa on your own neto okay kasi papag-upload din ko kayo ng ganito sa quiz no? paki-plug in yung uh, substrate concentration, 
yung velocity velocity without inhibitor and with inhibitor you show their inverse and their graphs okay and then from the graph no you can get the vm km and the slope then compare compare nyo ano nangyari then look at the table that i showed you here ito itong table na yan so from this you can tell whether you have competitive non competitive or uncompetitive inhibition pag competitive yung ating inhibitor na sa active site no para hindi pumasok yung substrate pag non competitive yung ating inhibitor ay nasa allosteric site so magbabago yung shape ng active site and kapag uncompetitive yung ating uh, inhibitor may kisapaw siya sa enzyme substrate complex and as a result hindi mabubuo yung products na no? okay so yun yung mga types of inhibition and for every drugs available sa market mga beta blockers um, alpha blockers na no? and yung mga antihistamines others etc no? so yun iba-iba yung kanilang mode of ano iba-iba yung kanilang mode of inhibition kasi okay so yun just that is to give you an insight kung ano yung ginagawa sa industry okay so balik na ulit tayo sa ating lesson okay so yun So ngayon, um, yung na-describe natin kanina pa, we just described kung ano yung ginagawa ng enzyme and paano nagkakaroon ng inhibition. Ngayon, paano ba yung mechanism? No? Paano nakakatulong yung enzyme sa mga chemical reactions natin? Okay. So there are several mechanisms no, na yung enzyme pwede gawin. So ito yung ginagawa niya. This is the general idea. Yung substrate papasok sa enzyme. Then we will have the enzyme substrate complex. Then from this, magkakaroon ng chemical reactions. And then it will produce the products. Pero anong type ng mga mechanism ba yung ginagawa nila? Okay. So there are three general types of enzyme mechanism. We have the covalent catalysis, the acid-base catalysis, and the metal ion catalysis. Okay. So for covalent catalysis, what happens here is that our enzymes no, and yung ating substrates, they form transient covalent bonds. So kumbaga they form ano, temporary covalent bonds. No? Okay? So as a result, no, since meron tayong ano, covalent bond na form between the enzyme and the substrate, there is now another way to do the reaction. No? Parang binigyan ni enzyme ng another pathway, yung ating substrate to proceed with the reaction. Okay? So for example, ito, this is under covalent catalysis. Mababansin natin that this is our substrate. No? So this is our substrate. Nagkaroon tayo dito ng ano, anong type ng reaction to. This is uh, this is possibly SN1 reaction, okay? So, SN1 na to siguro. So, yung lone pair ni oxygen nag-attack with the carbonyl and then yung H that is left, no? Umalis na yung H, naging living group siya. So, we have this acyl enzyme here, diba? So, useful yung org chem dito. So, by just looking at the mechanism, may kita natin that yung lone pair ng oxygen that attack the carbonyl carbon so we form a chemical bond so this is an acyl bond okay and then later on that bond was deacylated in the uh, in the addition of water so we have carboxylic acid products okay so yan so that is a covalent catalyst no when your enzyme is ano participating in the new pathway for the chemical reaction okay kumakabit yung enzyme literally with your uh, substrates. So that's covalent catalysis. Magkakaroon ka ng chemical bonds. The next one, we have acid-base catalysis. No? So ito naman, uh, acid-base reaction lang. No? So your H will react with OH. No? Yung inyong acids that will react with bases to form new molecules. No? So here are some examples here. Okay. So 
So basically, nagkakaroon ka lang ng acid-base reaction. No? So suppose you start with an alcohol and you react with, with, ano, with amide. No? So yung enzyme gagawin niya, magpo-provide niya ng ano, good environment to allow the acid-base reaction. Then through org chem mechanisms, then we will produce these products. No? This ammonia product, amine products, no? and other sub other products pa. Okay. So anyway, wala naman, uh, wala naman masyadong examples nito sa textbook din. Kaya isang example lang yung binigay niya. Okay. So ang karamihan kasi covalent catalysis talaga eh. Okay. Pero for the acid-base reaction, what happens here is that your enzyme will provide good uh, environment no? para magkaroon ng transfer ng H pati ng OH. No? So ito yung mga amino acids that participate in the acid-base catalysis. No? So kapag itong amino acid, ito yung nasa active site, and then most likely it will help the reaction to proceed. No? And yung mga acidic H natin. Yan yung ibibigay niya sa inyong substrate to allow the reaction to occur. And then lastly, we have the metal ion catalysis. So, nangyayari dito is that the metal ions will allow the redox reaction to occur. Okay? So, this is one example, carboxypeptidase. No? Kapag oxido reductase yung inyong enzyme, mostly may metal sila sa loob mismo ng enzyme. So, yung mga metal sa loob ng enzyme, they reduce or oxidize the molecules, your substrates, to produce the products. No? Okay. So, for this specific enzyme, may zinc siya, and that is reacting with your substrates. No? That is reducing the substrates no? to produce the products. Okay. So, yan. So, again, ano yung tatlong uri ng mechanisms? Covalent catalysis. Ano nangyayari dito? Yung enzyme kakabit sa substrate. Yung enzyme kakabit sa substrate, pero mapuputol din yung bond na yun, yung transient bond, yun, yung temporary bond. Acid-base catalysis, ang ginagawa ng inyong ano, enzyme is that they provide hydrogens no, sa inyong substrate para sila-sila na mismo yung mag-react. Okay? And these are the amino acids that do that. No? Okay. So, glutamate, aspartate, lysine, arginine, cysteine, histidine, serine, and tyrosine. No? So, sila-sila yung mga enzymes na, ay, sila-sila yung amino acid that help the uh, acid-base catalysis. And then lastly, we have the metal ion catalysis. So, what happens here is that your enzyme has the metal itself. And yung metal na yon, it allows for the redox reaction of your substrate. No? So, Naiki-alam siya sa affairs ng substrate. No? Okay. So now let's talk about some of the examples of enzymatic reaction. So chymotrypsin, ito yung mga enzymes na nakita sa ating stomach. No? So sila ay part ng proteases. No? And this is the catalytic triads no? that is generally found in almost all active sites. No? So itong catalytic triad na to, they actually help us no in acid base reactions no or in covalent bond mechanism no, or catalysis okay so yun lang and then lastly uh, ito patapos na tayo so ngayon Pag-usapan naman natin yung pag-regulate ng enzyme. So, how enzymes are regulated. Paano sila na to turn off. Paano sila na to turn on minsan. No? So, yung mga enzymes natin, they can be regulated uh, depending on certain responses or certain signals from our body. Okay? So, aning ways to regulate the enzyme? Paano sila na to turn off? Paano sila na to turn on? Remember yung allosteric site, no? Di ba yung inhibitor, pag kumabit doon, na to turn off yung enzyme. No? Parang nag-shut down siya. So, yun yung isang way, no? To regulate the enzyme catalysis, no? So, yung ating allosteric enzymes, pwede dagdagan mo siya ng, ano, ng other molecules para huminto yung kanyang pag-produce ng products, okay? And other enzymes are regulated by reversible covalent modification. Okay. So, for example, nyan is yung ating uh, 
yung ating zymogens, no? So, yung zymogens kanina, yun yung inactivated precursor ng enzyme, no? Pag pinutol mo yung, ano, dinagdag doon, active na yung enzyme. Pero kapag ibalik mo yun, hindi na uli active yung enzyme, okay? So, yun, yun yung mga ways to regulate the enzyme. First, again, is the allosteric regulation. So, kumbaga, ang gagawin mo lang dito is that you add your inhibitor, it will change the active site so that the substrate will no longer be attached to it. Okay? And also, minsan yung allosteric site, pwedeng activator din yan. Okay? Na pwedeng inhibitor yung kumabit doon, pwedeng activator. Okay? So, doon natin nare-regulate yung ating uh, enzymes, no? Kung gagana siya or hindi. Okay? So, kapag ang body natin, nagplay uh, pinagsama-sama niya yung mga inhibitors and activators sa ating body, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na uh, feedback inhibition. No? So, kumbaga, ito yung ating, for example, ito yung flow chart ng ating chemical reaction. If, kunwari, ayaw ng cell natin mag-produce ng products, then pwede i-cut niya yung ano, first step pa lang. No? Pwede lagyan na niya na, oh, ito, inhibitor, tumigil ka sa paggawa ng products. So, hihinto yung buong production line. Okay. So, ang tawag doon ay feedback inhibition. Okay. So, that means, ano, we have series of chemical reactions that happens, no? And we can stop yung production ng final product by inhibiting the individual enzymes, no? Pwede natin pigilan yung each enzymes dito to stop the formation of the products. Okay. And then lastly, we have the reversible covalent modification. Ito nga yung example yung, ano, yung pro-insulin. No? So yung pro-insulin, that is an inactivated version of insulin. So para, para kung ayaw mo, kunwari, ayaw mo na gumana yung insulin mo, ay, dadagdagan mo yun ng, ano, ng peptide bonds para maging zymogen siya. Okay. So ito yung mga ibang examples na. No? Uh, yun lang yung nangyayari dito. Okay, so here are some examples here. So, yan. So, for example, we have acetylcholinesterase. No? So, we have this molecule here na didadagdag sa kanya. And as a result, this will be inactivated na. Pero kung gusto mo to inactivate, uh, kung gusto mo to i-activate, putulin mo to. Okay. Babalik ka ulit sa inyong active enzymes. Okay. So, that will be all for our session. No? So, yun na yung overall enzyme ganap natin. So, to summarize, no? punta tayo dito sa main screen ko. Punta tayo sa main screen. Okay, so to summarize everything. So, what we know about enzymes that they speed up the rate of chemical reaction. They are polymers, biological polymers. Hence, they are made of proteins. No? So, gawa sila sa peptide bonds. Ayan. So, they speed up the reaction to a factor of 10 raised to 20. They are highly selective. Ibig sabihin, choosy sila because of their active site configuration and stereo-specific din sila. So, ibig sabihin, if L configuration gusto niya, yun lang tatanggapin niya molecules. Kapag D configuration gusto niya, i-reject niya L molecules. Diba? Okay. So, our enzymes can be classified by uh, yung nomenclature pala niya ay may ACE sa dulo. So, basta makita kayo ng name na may ACE sa dulo, enzyme yun. Example, amylase, no? uh, hexokinase, no? phosphofructokinase. No? So, lahat ng mga may ACE sa dulo, yun ay um, enzymes. Our enzymes can be classified by EC numbers, enzyme classification numbers. So, they are sets of numbers that will tell you anong class yan, ano ginagawa niya, and ano yung, ano, ano yung nililipat-lipat niyang atoms or molecules. Okay. So, here are the six um, classifications of enzymes. Pag sinabing oxidoreductases, o, uh, redox reaction yung ginagawa niya. Sinabing transferases, they transfer groups of atoms. Sinabing hydrolases, they cut the bonds no? with hydrolytic cleavage. No? Ibig sabihin, it will produce water when they cut the bond. 
Pag lyases naman, they cut the bond in the process called elimination reaction. Pwede yung E1, E2 reaction yung mangyari dyan. Pag isomerases, they just change the configuration of your molecule. So, kunwari, R yan, gagawin mong S. Isomerase kailangan natin doon. And then, lastly, ligases, they combine the molecules together. Marami pa yan, no? Pero ito yung nasa textbook ko. Pero, alam ko, last na check ko sa Google, 7 na ata yung enzyme classification or 8. No? So, just check the, ano, check the IUB website. Okay. So, ito yung model ng ating enzyme. Enzyme has its active site. Doon pumapasok yung substrate. And may maliit yan na crevice uh, somewhere in its uh, in its shape. No? And yun yung tinatawag nating allosteric site. No? Yun yung pinapasukan ng inhibitor or activator minsan. So, the process of attachment ng substrate sa enzyme can be described by lock and key model and induced speed. So, sabi sa lock and key, rigid yung enzyme. Ibig sabihin, yun ang talaga shape niya. So, that means the enzyme will not work if the molecule is not the same as yung gusto niya. Pero, ang mas acceptable ay yung induced fit. No? We assume that the enzyme are not rigid. So, ibig sabihin, mas flexible yung shape niya. And as a result, mas flexible din siya sa pag-select ng molecules. No? Okay. So, paano nagka-catalyze yung enzyme? They lower the activation energy no? to speed up the reactions. Some, exa uh, some enzymes may occur in inactivated states. No? Pwedeng zymogen tawag sa kanila. So, in order to activate zymogens, kailangan magputol ka ng peptide bonds. So, magiging activated na siya. The counterpart is the APO enzymes. So, the APO enzymes, wala kang puputulin dito. May idadagdag ka lang para gumana siya. So, yung dinadagdag sa APO enzymes ay cofactors or coenzymes. Cofactors, ito yung metals or mga minerals. Coenzymes, ito yung mga organic or metalloorganic molecules such as vitamins. Pag pinagsama yung cofactor, coenzyme, pati yung APO enzyme, you will create a holo enzyme. No? Ibig sabihin that is one functional enzyme. No? Holo means one. No? Isang buong enzyme na siya. So here are some of the cofactors. Yan yung mga metals and yan yung mga enzymes na kinakabitan nila to, for them to be activated. Here are some coenzymes we can get from vitamins and yan yung mga enzymes na uh, nat natutulungan nila. No, to activate. And also, minsan yung ating molecule, kailangan ng prosthetic groups no, para maging activated siya talaga. So, one, um, one prominent example of, ano, of molecules that is needed no, for the... Ay, nawala ako. <laughs> so, one example of the structure that needs the enzyme as prosthetic group is the heme no? or in the heme in the hemoglobin. So, that allows us to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide sa ating body. No? So, the speed of the enzyme can be described by its activity. No? And there are lots of factors that can affect the activity. Temperature, too high temperature, the protein will denaturate. No? Ibig sabihin, masasira yung enzyme activity mo. Uh, changes in the pH can also affect the enzyme activity because of their charges. No? Pwede magkaroon ng charge and as a result, magbabago yung shape ng enzyme. Uh, when you increase the substrates, ang mangyari yung enzyme mo may, uh, yung enzyme mo may overwhelm. So, it will show a plateau curve. No? Yung speed niya ay magpa-plateau. And then, when you increase the uh, enzyme concentration, of course, obviously, linear yung increase ng ating speed, no? So, ito yung ating plateau curve, no? So, when you increase the substrate too much, the speed of the reaction will be flattened, no? So, magpa-flat siya kasi wala, na-reach mo na yung limit. So, from this, we can actually design drugs, no? We can design chemicals, no? to help our biological systems to speed up or to stop certain reactions. No? 
So, dun papasok yung kinetics. No? The speed of the reaction can be described by michaelis menten constant, uh, michaelis menten equation. Okay. And kapag in-inverse mo yan, you will get the line weaver burke equation. So, from the two equations, we can get the Km and the Vmax. No? So, depending on the Km and the Vmax, you can have different types of inhibition. Competitive, non-competitive, and uncompetitive. No? Okay. So, yan. So, pag competitive, your inhibitor will, uh, will bind into the active site. No? Pag non-competitive, the inhibitor will bind to the allosteric site. And kapag uncompetitive, the inhibitor will bind on the uh, enzyme substrate complex. No? Ang ultimate goal nila is to stop the production of products. No? Okay? So, depending on the drug design, minsan kailangan mo competitive, minsan non-competitive. Okay, so depende na yun sa behavior ng enzyme mismo. Okay. So itong seat work na to, kayo magsasagot niyan. Popost nyo na lang siya sa canvas. Yung copy ng Excel na ginawa ko, upload ko rin sa inyo. Although, try to make your own Excel din. Na, para alam ko naman, alam nyo na yung Excel na. Alam, alam nyo ba yung Excel, pwede nyo yung magamit pag thesis na. Kasi, kasi instead of using SPSS, Excel na lang ginamit ko nun eh. <laughs> Nalilito kasi ako sa ano, SPSS. Kaya Excel ginamit ko to do T-test, F-test, ANOVA. Okay. So, masterin nyo na yung Excel. Ngayon pa lang. Okay. Okay. So, ito yung mechanism on how enzymes allow chemical reactions to occur. So, yan. Generally, your substrate will go into the enzyme, they will form the enzyme substrate complex, and then the products will be formed. No? But to be more specific, there are three general, uh, there are three types of catalysis, covalent, acid-base, and metal ion catalysis. But covalent, what happens here is that your substrate, uh, your substrate will connect to the enzyme, kakabit siya mismo sa enzyme. Okay. That will provide your uh, reaction another pathway no with lower activation energy so acid base reaction naman basically nagkakaroon na ng transfer of protons no from these amino acids that are present in your active site no by transferring hydrogens and allowing the reaction to i mean by allowing the molecule to rearrange may mabuo tayong products then we have metal ion catalysis so it uh, yung ating enzyme mismo may metal siya sa loob and that allows the redox reaction of some groups in the molecule of your substrate. So here are some exam uh, examples, chymotrypsin, ito yung catalytic triad sa chymotrypsin that kung mapapansin nyo, may aspartate, histidine, pati serine tayo. So pwede sila magform ng covalent cat catalysis o kaya ng acid-base catalysis. And lastly, enzyme regulation. How do we turn on? How we do we turn off enzymes? No? So, katulad kanina nang sabi ko, pwede sa allosteric site, no? pwede yun yung galawin mo in order to inhibit or to activate the enzymes. Pwede rin naman reversible covalent modification. For example, yung zymogens. No? So, for allosteric inhibition, so sa in allosteric site, kakabit yung inhibitor or activator that will open or close the active site. Okay? So, yung process na yan, yung allosteric regulation na yan, that results to a feedback inhibition. No? So, kunwari, ayaw na ng cell mo mag-produce ng, ano, mag ng ganitong molecule, maglalabas na siya ng inhibitor. Pag kailangan na niya, maglalabas siya ng activator. Yan yung dahilan bakit kapag ano, bakit kapag hindi tayo kumakain, minsan parang energetic pa rin tayo. So, our body releases some metabolites that will tell us na i-convert natin yung ating glycogen to glucose. So, feedback inhibition yun. Pag sabi ng body, oy, tulog pa rin siya, no? Hindi pa rin siya kumakain, pero kailangan ko na ng energy. So, sabihin niya, magre-release ako ng metabolites to convert glycogens into glucose. So, yung mga fats natin, makukonvert siya into sugars. No? Kaya may energy pa rin tayo. However, kunwari, gutom na gutom ka na talaga, starvation na, uh, magdademand na yung katawan mo na kumain ka. No? So, manghihina ka na doon. So, bababa na yung energy production mo. 
effect kasi sabi ng metabolites sa body natin. Okay? So, yan. So, yun yung algesteric regulation at work sa ating katawan. So, pag na-feel yung nagugutom na kayo, most likely yung enzymes nyo may paka na nun. So, pag huminto na yan sa glucose production, manghihina ka na. Magugutom ka na. Okay. Pero kapag marami ka pa namang ano, stored energy, pag marami ka pang glycogen sa body, kaya pa magtagal. Okay? And ito pa isa pang, ano, isa pang form of enzyme regulation, the reverse covalent modification. So, katulad ng sa zymogen, pwede dagdagan mo ng molecules yung inyong enzyme para tumigil siya sa pag-react. Okay? Kung gusto mo siya i-activate, edi tanggalin mo yung dinagdag mo. So, magiging active na uli yung enzymes mo. Okay? And that would be all. No? Itong inhibitor na lipat ko lang sa dulo. No? Okay. And that would be all for our session today. We're done sa midterms na. Okay? So, bigyan ko kayo copy nito. Upload ko na ngayon pa lang. Okay? Para alam niyo yung gagawin niya. Pag may question kayo about sa ano sa Excel na to, ah uh, sabi na lang din, okay? So basically ipa-plug in niyo lang yung substrate concentration pati yung ano pati yung tawag doon, pati yung velocities na. So ayan, andito na yung file sa canvas natin. So, yun yung sample calculation. Upload nyo na lang yung answer nyo doon sa seat work na nasa PowerPoint. Again, lahat ng PowerPoint andito na. So, ito yung sa enzymes. Buksan nyo na lang yung sa seat work natin dito. Comment nyo na lang yung answer nyo doon. And that will serve as your practice para sa quiz. No? So, sa quiz, sa quiz 5 specifically, Meron kayong question doon. Pre-preview ko na. So, may question doon na mag upload kayo ng sagot. Okay. So, upload nyo yung file nyo. Okay. So, yan. Upload nyo yan. Then, you submit the quiz. Okay. So, andito na lahat ng quiz. No? Quiz 1 to 5. No? Na-checkan na yung 1, 2, 3. 4 and 5 na lang yung kulang. So, these two are due by Wednesday next week. And yung midterm, i-open ko siya starting Monday until Saturday. Um, multiple choice, no? 10 questions per chapter. Okay. So, yun. Uh, yun lang. Okay. Alam nyo naman kung paano naman tayo mag-quiz-quiz ano, mag na. No? Okay. So, yun. Do you have any questions about our material? Ay, puti-puti ko pala. <laughs> Ayan. Do you have any questions? Or okay na. Okay na. No? Bali, ganun na lang nga yung Excel. Pakipractice na lang. And again, kapag yung dun sa tatlong criteria for type of inhibition, kapag dalawa lang yung na-meet, okay na yun. Okay. Pero kunwari, isa lang yung na-meet, tanungin nyo na ako. No? So usually, dalawa, okay na yun eh. Okay. Pag tatlo na-meet, edi good. Pero kapag dalawa, okay lang. Pero kapag isa lang talaga yung tumama out of all those, ano, all those possibilities. Ayun, paki-sabi sa akin kasi baka mamaya may mali sa given, okay? So yun lang, um, next week quiz na uh, midterm na. Open ko siya by Monday until Saturday. Malapit na time matapos. Okay. So yun. So far madali lang naman bio kayo, no? Puro memorize lang. Okay. So that will be all for our session today. I'll see you again next next week. No? So yeah, ingat always. Bye bye. And yeah, enjoy the upcoming long weekend. Dahil sa undas na. No? So ingat po and bye bye. Thank you po. Okay.